School's out for summer. School's out forever. <laughs> <laughs> I work in a school here in Germany which is from grade 5 to grade 13. Back then it used to be another school, but they changed it after a fire in our school's gym. I worked as a social assistant for the afternoon classes and ever since I started I felt a presence in the halls of one specific building, the building C. It all started when I heard complaints from the cleaning ladies that our faucets randomly started running. It confused me a bit because on that day, no one used the bathrooms. It got worse. Doors and windows locking and unlocking. Most windows have these little locks that you pull down so no one can open it, but we find those unlocked several times after locking them. Lights break, even after the janitors fix them, especially one specific light near our office. Things always go missing. Mostly keys or keychains, just to find them hidden at random places. We are still looking for that one key. We have a glass door in front of our bookcase, and when we close it, it usually is open again after a few hours with dirty handprints on it, even though no child went near there. No one quite believes me, but I'm thinking that we are dealing with a trickster spirit here that just loves to mess with us. Lately, it started to be more active again, ever since kids came back from their online meetings. It was less active during quarantine, only locking and unlocking a few windows and that's it. I also heard it knocking against the tiles in the bathrooms, where I presume it is often as most complaints come from the female bathrooms in the buildings, such as knocking or locking the doors or the faucets. Tell me what you guys think. If it's a spirit, ghost, or maybe something different. So when I was in school, about 14 years old, me and my friends said, Let's go climb around on the roof of their school. I went to a different school than my friends. To this day, I'm not sure why, but it was a warm night and was the weekend, so we thought, why not? We get to the school, which was only about 10 minutes away from our houses. This place just straight up looks creepy. Like it looks more like an old hospital than a school. But we hop over the fence and head to the part where you get up to the roof. So we are messing around on the roof for a while and my friend Kay says, I want to show you guys the basement. So we get down off the roof and get to these stairs that lead to the door. Kay says he's going to check if the doors are unlocked and me and my other friend, W, wait for him at the top. He shouts down to us that it's unlocked and to come down. So we do. This basement was a whole different vibe. Like, we weren't really joking, we just had our phone torches on and were looking around it as if someone was waiting down there for us. We checked and we were definitely the only three down there at the time. While we were looking around, we see a load of old school stuff. Like desks, chairs, that type of thing. We looked around a little more and decided to leave, so we could check some other stuff out and I was the last one out the door. My friends were waiting at the bottom of the stairs. Just as I go to shut the door, all three of us hear this girl's voice clear as day, say, Why are you leaving? And we just ran up those stairs and hopped back over the fence. We were all freaked out for a while, and after calming our nerves, all three of us were 110% sure we never saw anyone else in that basement. Some time ago I came here and talked about a spirit that is in one of the school buildings I worked at. Now I don't work there anymore but I still go to school there and have a contact to the people working in said school building. Now the spirit has been doing a few things before I left and I wasn't the only one who experienced those things. 
First of all, the spirit started calling people by their names. At least, that's what happened to me. I wanted to leave the building and go home. I was the last one left, so I was tasked to lock all the doors when I suddenly heard someone calling my name. At first, I thought it was my co-worker who had stayed a bit longer. But when I turned around, no one was there. The doors were all locked, too. The last day of my work, I was sitting in our office, alone, and I felt a weird surge of sadness. But it wasn't about me leaving. It was some kind of loneliness inside me that made me sad. But I didn't know how or why. That feeling would get even stronger after I heard my co-workers talking about how the building is going to be demolished so the students have more room for their break time. That feeling vanished as soon as I got home and I had a feeling that the spirit didn't want to leave them. I might go back from time to time as I still go there for school for a year. I hope that until the building is gone, I will have the opportunity to communicate with said spirit. Me and my friend are very close to each other. We hang out very often. We usually walk around our village, talk about stuff, or we're just on our phones. For some reason, we usually go pretty late, from 6pm to 9pm. Tonight, it was the usual, like always. We were just walking around some random places, around the park, church, and around the school. It was around 8pm when we were behind our former school for the third time that day. Nothing out of the ordinary happened before. It was pretty dark outside. The only thing that was providing a bit of the light was the school hall. Right in the middle of it were two white lights. We were walking the pathway like usual until I saw a tiny dot on the ceiling of one classroom. I stood there so that I could see what was up. My friend was right next to me. I was standing there for about seven seconds and just staring at the ceiling. When my friend grabbed me by my jacket and said, We need to go. Now. I was confused as we started running for no reason. I looked back at the classroom window. There was a small fraction of light that was visible in front of the classroom door. Enough for me to see what I saw. There was a human-like figure just sitting down in front of the teacher's desk. It was looking at us as we were running away. I was terrified and started running even faster. We ran for about 80 feet before we started walking again. I asked my friend what that thing was. It scared the hell out of us. Apparently my friend told me that he was looking at it while I was distracted by the dot on the ceiling. He explained that the figure was looking in the direction of the door when he first saw it. After about five seconds it turned its head towards us. That's when he grabbed me by my jacket and we started running. He described the figure to be skinny, about six feet tall. There's really no reasonable explanation to this incident. The school staff are the last that stay. Their shifts finish about 3, sometimes 4 p.m. And no one else has the key. The strangest thing is that it was our third lap around the school that night. We didn't see anything until the last time. At the end of the day, I still have no idea if that was a paranormal experience or if that was just something else that is unexplainable. I guess we'll never know. In 2016, I was an administrator at a middle school in Dallas, Texas. It was not unusual for me to go up to the school to do work on a weekend. This day was a Sunday in September, around 2 p.m. It is a large school building with a capacity of 1100 6th, 7th and 8th grade students. It was built in 1997. I was changing the letters to the message on the marquee in the front of the building, so I had to make a few trips from the front office to the outside of the building where the marquee is. I was the only person in the building, and I have to arm and disarm the building alarm. 
I would send a message to the teachers if they were allowed to come up to the school when I was working but on this day, I didn't tell anyone I was going to be working, so I expected to be alone. I was almost finished and went down the hall about three offices to use the restroom. While I was in there, I heard the heavy front office door open and close. It's an older building and the doors are heavy duty metal, so they kind of bang shut. Then I heard two female voices talking and became faint as I assumed they were walking towards the main hall of the school away from the main office and restroom that I was in. I thought it was odd because I had not sent the building will be open from this time to this time email so no one should have been up there but me. Still, teachers work a lot on the weekends and I thought they saw my car and felt okay coming in. As I walked back to the front, I looked down the main corridor. Even though the building is huge, a person can still see from one end to the other because each end has a glass foyer. I didn't see anyone, no big deal. After about 15 minutes I finished what I was doing and was going to leave. This would require me to arm the alarm system and false alarms incur a $500 false alarm fee from the city. Since I thought some other teachers were in the building, I needed them to leave with me. So I got onto the public address system and made the announcement. If you're working in the building, please call extension 25200 because I am about to leave. I waited and began turning off lights and packed my things. About three to four minutes pass and no one had called up front. At this point, I look out front to see if I could see any cars in the front parking lot, but there weren't any cars. At this point, the hair on the back of my neck stood up and I got a bit weirded out. I made the announcement one more time in case they didn't hear me. At this point, I would have crapped myself if the phone was to ring because I was pretty sure the voices I heard were not teachers. Needless to say, I was really creeped out, grabbed my things, armed the alarm and hustled out. I drove around the entire building to make sure they weren't parked in another parking lot and to verify no classroom lights were on. All lights were off and all four parking lots were empty. The alarm would have been triggered if anyone was in the building and left after I left. So I'm a custodian at a local high school. My shift is 4 p.m. to 12 a.m. We have a pretty large performing arts center and I honestly hate cleaning it at night because it's always dark when I go in and I have to search around with my phone's flashlight until I get to the light switches. In the back of PAC, there is a classroom, two bathrooms and a makeup costume room where there are at least eight mirrors each on both sides of the room facing each other, creating an infinity mirror. It terrifies me to go in there and look into them most of the time. My experience happened when I was out there with a co-worker. He is more sensitive to energies and feels them right away whereas I don't really notice shifts in them unless they are pointed out or they are majorly different and noticeable. We walked into the makeup room and he stopped and said, did you feel that? The change in energy? And I told him no but then I left and came back into the room maybe five minutes later. And since I was already thinking about it, I instantly picked up a heavier, deep feeling in the atmosphere when I walked in. I described it to him and he said that's what he felt too. Off and on I'll hear things rattle like doors and things around the back of the building where the makeup room is and I'll feel uneasy. But it wasn't until I had my fiance start working with me yesterday that things got more pronounced. She used to be Wiccan and had dealt with a lot of paranormal and demons who stayed with her for years. And on top of that, she's an empath. So she's more susceptible to energy shifts and entities. 
I made the mistake of talking about the weird feelings and sounds I get when I'm in there while we were cleaning in the back of the PAC. And when she was walking around, she said she felt something brush her back. We also walked through the doorway to the bathroom and it got significantly colder, even though we were in there not long prior and it felt the same temperature as the other rooms. When she pointed it out and we were talking about it, I started hearing small voices and I couldn't tell if I was just making it in my head or if the squeaky door I was leaning against was doing it but I told her to stop talking and I stopped moving the door and then she heard it too for a second. We left and had my co-worker come in and help us. He left the building with us across the room and by the time we got to the hallway to the door we felt cold for a second and then back to the regular temperature. People are telling me it's a possible poltergeist, given the fact that they are created unintentionally and because it's a theatre building where plays go on. Someone could have been really into a character or angry and accidentally created it. Others have said it's most likely intentional. Does anyone have any ideas? I'm not sure what it is, but it terrifies me. The middle school I attended was once the first high school built in the downtown area of my hometown in the early 20th century. Comprised of three main halls, a gymnasium, and a large office building where the library and auditorium were located. At this time, my mother worked in the main office and would work through the summer while students and teachers were gone. On one such day, she was in her office alone when she heard the front door open and the sound of a group of children walking toward the office. She called out with her normal friendly demeanor, expecting them to round the corner any moment. Instead, she heard the door to the auditorium open and the sounds go with it. Now, thinking some children were where they were not supposed to be, she quickly got up and walked into the auditorium to tell them to leave. She was confronted with only empty and lonely seats and the dark, unlit stage. Feeling uneasy, she began her exit, and as she did, she heard a child giggle somewhere in the darkness. Shortly after, she was again in the office alone, when suddenly she heard a loud banging coming from the library above her. Worried but dutiful, she made her way up the stairs and opened the door to the library. Every chair and table was tossed and tipped aside, haphazard and cluttered. Scared and annoyed, she quickly reset everything and made her exit. She would go on to complain for weeks about this repeating in that same location. The final and most extreme of her experiences happened in the office. She was filling paperwork and organizing things for the assistant principal, who was not on school premises at the time. She was walking back and forth between her office, the conference room and the assistant principal's office. She had just walked into the conference room and felt a sharp and aggressive tug on the back of her head. She whirled around expecting to see an assailant, but there was nothing. Determined to stand her ground, she mustered up her courage and shouted out that she would not be bullied or made afraid and that she had work to do, as if reprimanding a child. After which things calmed down in that building. The eighth grade hall was a whole other matter entirely. The summer going into seventh grade, we decided to do a little ghost hunting of our own. A trio comprised of myself, my mother and my grandfather entered the empty hall in the late afternoon. We sat on the old steps in silence for a while, looking down the hall with our backs to the entry to the girls' gym. After a while, we began to hear what sounded like footsteps on the old basketball court in the girls' gym. Startled but excited, we quietly walked into the empty gym. The court creaked and whined as we walked across it until we came to a halt in the middle and just stood there for a minute. An eerie feeling came over us and a creaking began to sound from the court as if footsteps were circling around us. Feeling uneasy, we began our exit. 
As we opened the double doors of the gym into the main hall, all three of us looked down at the end of the hall that connects the 7th and 8th grade halls together and saw a tall, thin and inky black figure swiftly glide across from right to left and out of sight. Filled with hormonal courage, I charged down the hall towards it but by the time I reached the end of the hall there was nothing to be seen. Freaked out, we called it a day. Sometime later, after school hours, I had just finished training with the track and field team and was walking up to the main office where my mother was. As I was walking, I began to hear a loud and repetitive banging noise. Confused, I looked around for the source. I looked up and through the high windows of the girls' locker room. I could see a single locker door opening and slamming shut repetitively with force by itself. I stood there for a minute in amusement thinking it was a vent or something causing it, but no other locker doors near it moved. It continued to slam loudly as I made my way to the office. I don't know when it stopped. The final tale I have from this location is the one that creeps me out the most. Over summer going into 8th grade while the buildings were mostly empty, a group of electricians and custodians were tasked with climbing up into the crawl space above the 8th grade hall to solve a problem. They were going on about their casual conversation in the front office where my mum was, drinking coffee and laughing as she heard them exit and head to the hall. About 20 minutes passes and she says they all enter the main office. None of them are talking, no laughing, their entire demeanour now off. These big burly man's men are now pale as paper and are avoiding eye contact with her. She approaches the main custodian, a friendly, usually candid older gentleman, and asks him what's wrong. He brushes her off in a somewhat rude manner, that nothing is wrong and that they're just working some things out. Two years pass and none of those men will speak a word about it. Until one day my mother confronts the main custodian, demanding what made him act so craven that day. He breaks and finally tells her, says that he and a few of the guys went up into the crawl space that day, that they had been working up there for about 10 minutes when they saw something, something that scared these men so badly that they would rather be reprimanded for not doing their job than go back up there. Men who pride themselves on their integrity, turning away from their responsibility out of fear of what was up there. When she pressed him for more details, he refused and told her to drop it, never speaking about it ever again. Hello watchers and listeners, thank you so much for watching. As always a big thank you to all of the Reddit users who kindly allowed me to use their stories. If you want to help support this channel, you will find links to both my Patreon and my Teespring store in the description below. So feel free to have a look. And the biggest thank you to all of you who continue to support me. I truly do appreciate it. And remember, Papa loves you. <laughs>